From 2021 onwards, minor league baseball's highest level will no longer be made up of the International League and the Pacific Coast League, but instead AAA East and AAA West. With that being said, here are all 30 of the AAA stadiums. Huntington Park If you're thinking about doing a bit of sign stealing at this stadium, forget about it. The FBI is right next door. They'll catch you and I don't know if Ohio has the death penalty or not, but it's just not worth the risk. From your seat, you get an excellent view of the incredible, uh, pretty good Columbus skyline. Victory Field. It's not them being cocky in calling it Victory Field. It commemorates the victory of the USA and its allies in World War II. The stadium is highly praised and it too has a pretty good view of the city. Principal Park is located in a rather spectacular location where the Raccoon River meets the Des Moines. When you visit this stadium, you have to try their steamed hams. They're absolutely divine. Despite their name, they're actually grilled. I guess it's just a principal thing. Louisville Slugger Field Some stadiums are named after banks or insurance companies or something else that has nothing to do with the sport. This pool park has the most fitting naming rights sponsor there is. Not only are they a bat manufacturer, but they're probably what Louisville is most well known for. The stadium has an interesting design that incorporates an old train shed into it. <laughs> Werner Park is located way out in the outer reaches of Omaha. And so, from the seats, there's no view of the city or anything, it's just some fields. But, to be honest, I kind of like that. CHS Field is the smallest stadium in the AAA East. Instead of the seats facing the St. Paul City skyline, you get an excellent view of a freeway overpass, which is an interesting choice. Fifth Third Field has a confusing name. Is it the fifth stadium to be called Third Field? Who knows? I like the stadium's exterior. It has a rustic look that fits in well to the surrounding buildings. It's in a great location as well, right in the heart of downtown Toledo. Sarlin Field is the first retro classic baseball stadium ever built. It's currently the biggest AAA baseball stadium and was built with a potential MLB expansion in mind. Once again, it has an excellent view of a freeway overpass. Coca-Cola Park I quite like this ballpark. It's got an interesting facade on the side of the parking lot. And of course, the famous Coca-Cola bottle that launches fireworks every time a run is scored. Which you could call a cheap marketing gimmick, but who cares, I like it. PNC Field is located in the leafy surrounds of Outer Scranton. It shouldn't get confused with PNC Park, which is much bigger and better looking. That's what she said. Because it's Scranton. Get, yeah, moving on. NBT Bank Stadium. There's something about this ballpark that's giving me abandoned fairground vibes. I don't know why exactly. Is it this thing? Is it the light towers? Or maybe it's the fact that this area is completely overgrown and there's a choo-choo train that runs alongside it. Not sure, but it's still a nice stadium. The soon-to-be-completed Polar Park 
cost around $157 million, which was a little under double the initial estimate. That price tag makes it the most expensive minor league baseball stadium of all, all time. You're really just gonna interrupt me like that? That's so rude. Truist Field says it has the best view in minor league baseball, and I believe it. After all, it is the truest field. Pause for laughter. Also, how incredible would it be to watch a game from this rooftop? Durham Bulls Athletic Park, or DBAP as it's often referred to as. I really like this stadium. It has plenty of quirks, including a huge bull, a blue monster, which is slightly smaller than the green monster, and this nice little grass embankment. Cool Ray Field. Is it called that because the roof looks like a cool ray gun? Maybe. Almost certainly not. I commend the designers for doing something a little different because a lot of minor league baseball stadiums can look quite similar. So why not take a walk on the wild side? It looks good. 121 Financial Park is located between an ice hockey arena and an NFL stadium. As much as I like this stadium, they missed an opportunity to be different. The team is called the Jumbo Shrimp, so the roof could have been a giant shrimp. Ah, but some people are allergic, aren't they? Yeah, that's why they didn't make the roof a giant shrimp, of course. AutoZone Park is another highly regarded stadium, and it should be. It was one of the most expensive minor league baseball stadiums ever built, at a little over 80 million back in 2000. It kind of looks like a scaled down MLB stadium, and that's what they say, it's a major league stadium without the bad seats. First Horizon Park is yet another excellent stadium. The obviously unique feature of this ballpark is the guitar scoreboard, which is such a cool touch. As soon as you see that guitar, you know exactly which city you're in. Well, you should probably know which city you're in, regardless. Harbour Park. What an incredible spot to build a baseball stadium. Right by the river. It looks like it's in a somewhat industrial area, but I like that. You got the shipyard over here, this train bridge thing, and those power pylons. Okay, maybe that's not so great, but still, it's a, it's a good spot. Isotopes Park. It's a fantastic stadium, but I'm very sad that they moved the isotopes from Springfield. No, of course the Springfield isotopes still exist. It was actually the Calgary Cannons that moved to Albuquerque. And fans voted for the name to be changed to the Isotopes. With the hot climate and fairly high altitude of Albuquerque, there's bound to be plenty of homers hit at this ballpark. Sorry about that, but you know me, occasionally I'll be quirky. Southwest University Park. The exterior was inspired by the El Paso Union Depot, and I think it looks incredible. From your seat, you get an enviable view of the city and the rugged mountains in the distance. For its relatively small population, El Paso's stadium game is on point. Chickasaw Bricktown Ballpark. Well, if you're a brick fan, then this stadium is like a theme park for you. For starters, it's located in Bricktown. The exterior is made of brick. You've got a nice view of some brick buildings. The windows are made of brick. The hot dogs are made of 7% pulverized brick. The grass is brick. The sky is brick. The air is brick. Brick, brick, brickity, brick, brickity, brick, 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 brick. Two hours later. <clears throat> Dell Diamond. 
Now, if you're a Diamond fan, then, I don't know, go to a jewelry store or something. Because this stadium is obviously not made of diamonds. Interestingly, it was transformed into a film set for parts of Fear the Walking Dead Season 4. They planted vegetables on the field and destroyed the grass. That must have been a groundskeeper's nightmare. Constellation Field, located in Sugarland, Texas. The diabetes capital of the world, probably. Not to be outdone by a giant guitar, this stadium scoreboard is a giant depiction of Texas. I still prefer the guitar. An insulin syringe would have probably been a little more appropriate for a place called Sugarland. I do like this stadium though. Las Vegas Ballpark. A brand new flashy stadium for the world's flashiest city. It features the biggest video board in minor league baseball and breathable seats made out of mesh, appropriate for the hot climates. The award-winning venue is the second most expensive minor league baseball stadium at around $150 million. Greater Nevada Field is located in the biggest little city in the world and sandwiched between the Truckee River and these train tracks which is probably the most dangerous place to try and catch a home run. You see people sitting on kayaks outside Oracle Park. I wonder if fans sit outside this ballpark on their trains that they drove to the stadium. Sutter Health Park is a fairly simple stadium, but its strong point, like a lot of the stadiums in this video, is the view that you get from your seats. You've got a direct line of sight to a very interesting office building in the shape of a pyramid called the Ziggurat and Tower Bridge in the background. Smith's Ballpark has one of the biggest upper decks in the minor leagues. And from that upper deck, all you can see from your seat is the field, the trees and the mountains. Perfect for the nature lover like myself. Cheney Stadium has a fairly unique layout compared to all the other AAA stadiums. And it has the smallest capacity as well. The exterior is kind of reminiscent of a treehouse, which is no bad thing. The Rainiers are actually outnumbered by two different soccer teams that they share the stadium with. Yeah, I did actually forget Frontier Field, which is in AAA East, but uh, it's too much hassle to go back and put it in there, so I'm just going to add it on here. It's a nice stadium. I don't know what it is about that particular shade of green that you see there on the roof. I don't know why baseball uses that color in particular, but uh, it works, especially with that brick facade. And that's it for today's video. Yeah, I may have hopped on a bit too much about the view that you get from your seats, but for me that's the great thing about baseball stadiums, that open end. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.